Hey guys, it's Archie Luxury. Archie Luxury from the Archie Luxury channel, the Paul Pluter channel, and Archie Luxury corporate. Guys, keep watching, keep watching. I need the viewers. I need the viewers, I need the subs, I need it. Like, subscribe, and tell your friends. Tell your friends, whether you like them or hate them. Just tell them anyhow. Archie Luxury on YouTube. Hey guys, Paul Pluto on the Paul Pluto channel. Today guys, I'm doing a paid review. This is paid review 20 SE32. Quick, quick, quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing a Herman So shirt and I'm wearing a Patek 5127. This is a white gold Calatrava. I just love this model. And it's wearing a Theo and Harris strap. Okay, let's go. Sent you fifty dollars. Uh, this is for David. I've sent you fifty dog fifty Great British pounds for a collection review. Uh, he's given me okay. I feel I have finished my collection. I'm forty two years old, living in London, and have grafted to get these, but feel I have enough money tied up in them. And by the time, and it's time to try and get a proper <coughs> property abroad and travel and stuff. I know the vintage watches aren't your cup of tea so much, but I need some lower valued or more subtle type watches because some of the places I go are pretty rough. Anyhow, the watches are... Da -da -da -da. Here we go. Here we go. Paddock, 18K, Rose Gold, Gondola, 5111R. Bought in 2019 for 7,650 pounds. Very reasonable buying there. 2018 model seems to have almost doubled in 18 months ownership. <coughs> Box and papers. Next piece is a Vacheron Overseas 49140. Bought 2016 for 5,900 pounds. Love the double date. On these early uh, models box and extract then we've got an AP Royal Oak 14790 board new with 45% discount through a contact in 2004 so owes me 3200 pounds I think this 37 mil model I had the same one I had the same one I know the 14790 ST with screw down crown is the perfect watch but now it's become too expensive to wear every day. For 10 years, it was my daily wearer, box and papers. Then he's got a Jager Le Coultre 18K white gold master calendar moon phase. Bought 2018 through Chrono 24, but they were awful. Seller claimed it was mint, but the strap was disintegrated and it needed servicing. Chrono claimed mint is subjective, so it cost me... 65.50 but I had to spend a further thousand pounds sorting it out I love the officers back solid case back opens to reveal a glass back box and papers <clears throat> a JLC 18 carat next piece JLC 18 carat memo box mid 50s bought in 2019 for 2800 pounds Nice to have a me mechanical alarm. Then he's got a Cartier Pasha 18K. 2002, bought in 2006 for 3500 Always loved this model. And glad to see they are re-releasing it. Box, no papers. Rolex Sub, 161610, 1990. First year of release. Oh, I thought the 161610 came out before then so you had the 16800 I didn't think the 16800 had a huge run uh, okay ah interesting when did they come out <clears throat> that's a good question good question kidoki um a kidoki Anyhow, he bought it for £5,500. Sorry, he bought it for £4,300 in 2017. 
particularly minty still has the sticker on back box no papers then he's got a, a Rolex 16570 Polar Explorer 2 2003 Roch bought for £5,500 in 2020 box and papers an Amiga mid-size Seamaster wave dial uh, 1999 bought 2018 for 1300 bucks. Yep, they are very good bang per buck. Box, no papers. Then we've got a Amiga Speedmaster 186, 1861 movement men on the moon. Halcylite year 2000 bought 2018 for 2200 pounds. Box, no papers. Probably my most worn watch. Then he's got some cheapies. He's got a Rolex rectangular. 1500 pounds, an Amiga Constellation, 14 karat Pipan, 1966, 1400 pounds, an IWC Pilot uh, is about 2000 pounds, a Longines 1921 trench watch, Ozum 350 pounds, he's got a Geneve 18k pole router, uh, Ozum 17, and a Seiko Presage cocktail time. Ozum 390 pounds. Okay, so there we go. We've got a bit of a collection here. What do we think? And I, I got to tell you there, you know, there's nothing wrong with uh, uh, um, Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that that uh, collection there. It's a cool collection. Hi guys, Archie Luxury, and who do I recommend in America? In America, who do I recommend for quality pre-owned wristwatches? David SW, David SW, David SW. Go to davidsw.com. He is the best, the greatest pre-owned dealer in all of the United States of America. David SW, David SW, David SW. Okay, so let, let's have a bit of a talk here. He's got some really beautiful stuff in the in the goods section there. And I, I agree, you've got some amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. Um, i got to say, the pick of this entire collection is that Patek 5111. That's the, the gondola style watch. I absolutely love them. And uh, you, you are right. They have, have really shot up. Um... <clears throat> you got it for a great price. It uses the two one five mechanical. No, it doesn't. I think. I think. I think. I thought it uses the two one five move. Um, it's it's a great watch. It's it's a manual wind. Great watch. Um, what can you say about it? It's 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 a fantastic. Um, it, 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 it's it's it's. I, I think um, I've got to be completely honest with you there. Um, I think it's I think it's it's a very 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 good collection. You've got many many different facets in it there. Um, I I tend to think that the um, you've got a nice selection of good pieces i would tend to say i would tend to say uh the garbage i don't even know why you count the garbage in there it was kind of uh yeah it, it's kind of <clears throat> yeah it, it's a bit of garbage there but the 51 11 is in rose gold it's beautiful it just looks beautiful in your box there i gotta say i also I also love the, um, I love your Vacheron, the Vacheron, yes, yes, the Vacheron, they are a great looking watch, I think they're, they're just beautiful, uh, <clears throat> the Overseas is a great model, um, then you've got your AP, I own that model, yes, yes, that's a, those have shot up a lot, shot up a lot. 36 mil, they're kind of, kind of a little bit small. That's the only thing with it. 
Um, but it is a it is a great great watch. There's no question of that. Um, <clears throat> then we've got the the JLC the Moon. The Master Calendar Moon Phase, beautiful. That's in white gold, lovely piece. We've got the, you got a bit of vintage there. Vintage, got the Memovox. Yes, I've never been a huge fan of the Memovox, but it's okay. The Cartier Pasha. Um, that, that's, a, that's a nice watch, that. That is lovely. That's a very, very 90s type of Cartier. Very, very 90s. Um... Then, then we've got the the Submarina, Submarina, um, the sixteen six ten. Then the um, the Polar Explorer, and then we've got the mid size. The mid size, I'd I'd say, is, uh, I I don't know if I. Um, I don't know. The Rolex Submariner. De -de -de -de. I'll just double check this. Actually, the first, the first sixteen six ten was came out in nineteen eighty nine. Okay, I suppose that's a. Is that an L serial number? <clears throat> yeah, you could. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, I didn't think it was. Yeah, I thought I didn't think it was ninety, but okay, nineteen eighty nine. Nineteen eighty nine was the first year the sixteen six ten came out. Okay, beautiful. Beautiful indeed there. Um yeah, okay. And then I gotta say, you your lesser box there, you know, there's some interesting pieces there. I think it's the main main we wanna focus on the, the top box. I mean, you've got some good, the pieces I like, the Paddock, the Vacheron, the AP, the JLCs, the Speedy, the two Rolex Sports, uh, a, a Polar and a Sub, uh, the Cartier, oh, it's a bit, it's a bit, how's your father, but I gotta say, this is a nice collection here, uh, do I think you need anything, not not particularly. I don't. I don't think you you really need anything particularly there. It's got some got some good spread there. What would I? I see. I think you've got the perfect dress watch, the three sports watches that I. I suppose if I was going to cull something that midsize, Seamaster. Unless the wife wears it, the lesser stuff. <clears throat> No, I, I I tend to think you've got you got your bases covered. You got a you got a you got some beautiful pieces there. Yes, I I tend to agree. I agree. I think you might have you. I mean, how many paddocks do you really need there? How many do you need? You've got a fifteen a fifty one eleven, beautiful done. You've got a Vacheron sports watch as a heavy hitter. You've got the AP. You've got so many. Wonderful things in this box. Uh, I, I don't. I don't have a problem with it. I think it's a great collection. I think it's great. Um, so, I, I, I would say I tend to agree with you. I think you might be done. You're 42 years old, and what what else would you add? You got a sub. You got a, a Polar Explorer Two as your GMT watch. You've got a Speedy. You got you know. In many ways there, you might have too much. I think sometimes you might even want to get rid of a few things. I don't know about adding. What 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 don't I like? See, I, I would kind of say the Paddock, keep. The Vacheron, keep. The AP, keep. The JLC, I really like. And even the Memovox, keep. The Cartier, I put a, put a, bit, of a bit of a question mark to that. That's kind of... Uh, it's a bit, how's your father, 1990s, it, it was so cool at the time, but now it's aged a bit. The sub, keep, the polar, keep. Uh, I'd say the mid-size, you know, unless the wife wears that, I, I don't know if I would keep the Seamaster. 
I don't know. Uh, if it was a standard size, I'd say yes, keep it. But the mid-size, do you really need it? I'd probably... The, the, the uh, Speedmaster, definitely keep. In the cheap stuff, see, it, if it's cheap, it doesn't matter. The, the rectangular, see, I kind of like that. That rectangular Ultra 1923 manual. The Constellation, I'd keep. The IWC Pilot, that's okay. Long Jeans is okay. The Geneve, Universal Geneve. Yeah, they're, they're all okay there. I suppose the only two watches I don't is the Cartier and the mid-size Omega. Do you need that? I'd possibly, you know, you're going to, they're, they're kind of highly saleable watches. That's kind of what I would do. But i got to be honest with you, the collection, it's good. It's a very nice, you've got a beautiful collection. Absolutely beautiful. You've got all your bases covered. Yeah, I think, I think in many ways less could be more. I think I think it might have a bit too much stuff. I think, because, I mean, you've got the paddock. You've got so many beautiful pieces. You don't need, I don't think you need to add anything. It's a good collection. So, well done, my boy. Well done. Is it well-rounded? I feel, I feel it may have too much in it. I reckon a bit of less is more could work for you. That's that's the only criticism is is there's a bit too much. I think if you got rid of a few things, it kind of pop. So, is it well well? You, you can't say it's not well rounded. Look at it. We've got the Holy Trinity Paddock Vacheron AP. We've got the most iconic sub. We've got an Explorer Two and a Speedy. That's kind of like a sub collection in itself. We've got some beautiful JLCs, a vintage and a modern. We have got so many. I would tend to say get rid of the Cartier, get rid of the midsize. That's that's kind of what I would do. That's That would be, I think, less is more in your case. Maybe just a little bit too much. It, it clouds the greatness of it. Okay, guys, I'm Paul Pluto. This has been a paid review. Like, subscribe, tell your friends. Don't be afraid to put some negative comments. And remember, guys, I can't survive on the Google Ads alone. I need these paid reviews to keep me full-time on YouTube. Without these paid reviews, I can't survive. 50 US dollars. Look down below in the description to organize a paid review now. Hey guys, Archie Luxury, who do I recommend for watches in Brisbane and Sydney? Vintage Watch Co, that's correct. Vintage Watch Co in Brisbane Arcade in Brisbane and the Strand Arcade in Sydney. Vintage Watch Co, Brisbane and Sydney. Ronnie, I've known him since the late 90s. Ronnie is a top bloke. Luke is a great guy. Vintage Watch Co. That is who I recommend in Australia. Check out Vintage Watch Co. and the guys' amazing range of watches. They also do service and repairs. Vintage Watch Co. That is where the pontiff goes. You know, some of my paddocks came from Vintage Watch Co. That's right, guys. Vintage Watch Co.